What's up guys and welcome to another episode of Test It Tuesday, my favorite day of the week. You guys know the drill every week we test out a product. I tell you guys the good, the bad and the ugly and the best part about it is that this happens every Tuesday so if you guys don't want to miss out on the next episode hit that subscribe button and don't forget to turn on notifications. Today I want to show you guys this controller that was sent out to me last year in December so I've almost had it for a whole entire year. This controller is supposed to help you with video editing, photography and other things so the idea is that these controllers are supposed to like map out and create macros and just kind of keep you away from the keyboard and do things a lot quicker and typically they work really well they are very expensive so a controller let's say from like black magic will run you somewhere between three thousand dollars and up this thing is much cheaper and the idea is that it's modular so it's supposed to help you with that and this video might be a little long but I want to show you guys in depth how it works and how I've been using it for almost a whole entire year. So these things here are kind of square shaped and rectangle and the best part about it is that they are magnetic so you can break them apart. So this here is a knob and let's say for example I don't want this configuration I want something else I can reconfigure this however I want and it'll automatically stick to it because everything is magnetic. So say for example I want my slider to be maybe on this side. Uh, let's say for example on this side over here, I can go ahead and do that. Let's say I want to move this you know, on this side and re-break this or somebody's going to help me edit. They can reconfigure it however they want. And you can program this to work on applications like Premiere, Final Cut, Lightroom and other applications. I mainly only use it for Adobe Premiere and it's been working really well. There are some little quirks about it and I will talk about this or those a little bit later. So let me show you how this works. So you'll need to download this app and it works both for Windows or Mac and you'll see here right now I have it under my edit. So basically when I edit I have this configuration right here and I'll show you guys more or less what each button does. So I've programmed this one to scale my footage and again I'll show you guys how that works. Uh, this button here renders everything. This is my position X, position Y and you can program these pretty much to do almost anything within Premiere or Final Cut. This will adjust my volume level within Adobe Premiere. This will actually adjust my volume volume level within the Mac. So it doesn't actually touch my footage. This, for example, if I play some music right now or the soundtrack, you'll see here. If I want to adjust the volume, if I want to lower it, this will only adjust the Mac and then if I want to raise it. So this doesn't actually affect my footage. This is more for volume controls because typically the way if I want to lower the volume, I would have to push on the touch bar move this little slider up and down. I mean, it doesn't take that much, but look how much nicer it is to just do this. This works so much better. So this is nice and again, does have has nothing to do with Adobe Premiere. So I'll show you guys what these other buttons do. So for example, if I push on this, this will jump to my next profile. So you can create profiles. So when I'm editing, this is the profile that I use when I'm editing. If I want to color grade, all I do is push on this and then the button layout reconfigures itself to the way that I want to use it when I'm color grading. So now things change. So now this is my contrast knob. This is my highlights knob. This is my shadows knob. This is my color temperature, my tint. This is my, goes back to my other profile. So I only have two and this resets my Lumetri. So you can also color code things. So for example, my shadows, if I want to change the color of this, let's say to red, I can go ahead and do that. So for me, like everything I do is in a logical way. So for example, highlights is going to be white because I automatically know that highlights white, you know, it's obviously bright. Shadows to me, it needs to be black or dark. So to me, when I look at this, I already know. And if I'm trying to, you know, teach somebody or if they want to use this method, it's so much easier, but you can configure it however you want. And I'll show you guys, let me turn off my key light just so that you can see some of the colors and how it works. So it's kind of bright. I mean, if you're looking at it through daylight, it looks a lot nicer during a uh, nighttime, but uh, it does work really well. So this adjusts my color temperature and I like this particular color because typically I like a warm footage. So for me, warmth, this already associates with that. Uh, tint, so to me when I think of tint, I think of magenta values, not typically green. So if I move this slider around, it'll adjust that. So let me show you guys how I use it in Adobe Premiere. So let me go jump back to my edit tab. So I'll go here. So for example, the video you are seeing right now is, is actually in a two by one format. So if you're looking at this in a smartphone, you'll notice that it takes up 
pretty much the whole entire screen real estate, especially if you're using like an iPhone 10, a Google Pixel 2, Samsung phone, it takes up the whole thing because it's two by one. So my footage, I usually shoot in a cinema 4K, which is a resolution of 4096 by 2160 which means I can reframe my image or scale it down to show you guys more of the screen real estate. So for example, typically because I'm shooting in this format, I can scale down to 94% and there won't be any black bars. So for example, if I scale this down to 94%, you'll see that the image will actually show you more. Now if I keep turning the knob, nothing happens because what I've done is within the app, I can tell it to only scale to 94. So basically I'm telling it only go to 94, don't go below that because look what happens if I go below 94. You'll start to see black bars. That's not really good for me. So what I like to do is keep it at 100 or 94. Now let's say for example, I do want to keep it at 100. So I'll just move this all the way to 100. And then let's say I want to reframe my image. So right now the phone is getting cut off. I want to see more of the top phone. What I can do is actually move my Y axis and then just kind of slowly turn this down and then, oh, there it goes, just a little bit, and now you're able to see more of the phone. Maybe I wanna see more of my finger, so I can just go ahead and move this to the left, so my X position, and then there it goes. So these are little micro adjustments that I kind of use. Now, if it's laggy a little bit, it's because the computer is slow. This is not a fast computer, I'm editing in 4K, and I'm doing a screen recording. So things might seem a little laggy, but it's not because this is laggy, it's just because of the screen recording. So those are things that I always do when I'm editing footage. Now, normally I would have to mess around with this and it just takes too much time. Now, I told you guys this adjusts the volume. This will actually create keyframes. So for example, if I go to my audio file here, and I move it back. Let's say I want my music to start off very low. What I can do is I can adjust the slider. You'll see here on my levels. So I have it start to maybe like negative 25 or so. And then from there, let's say I wanted to ramp up slowly to about maybe when it gets to 20 seconds, I want it to be at zero. I can just move my slider over to about 0% right about there, and you'll see it'll automatically create that keyframe and curve. So now when I play my music, it'll slowly ramp up the music, but that is so much easier than going, in, going into my mouse, creating these little pinpoints, dragging things. I can just literally move the slider around and it'll automatically, you can see the levels, it will adjust. So these are shortcuts that help me a lot when I'm editing. Another thing that I normally do is, because I don't use Final Cut, is I like to render out my sequence. So normally I have to go to sequence, render in and out, and I get it, maybe this takes like two seconds, but what if I could just push this button and it just starts to render? See, that makes it so much easier to do than going through all of these, and I get it, you could probably program the return button to do the same thing. The idea is if you have other controls here, you're able to just move things or do things a lot quicker. So now let's go into the color side. So if I click on my coloring tab and I push this, everything will change including the colors. So for example, if I'm color grading this particular image, let's say it's a little bit too warm and I wanna cool it down, no problem, I can move my slider and you'll see this is really cold image. Or let's say I really wanna warm it up to 100%, obviously I'm exaggerating, I can do that. So color is something that I, or temperature is something that I'm always adjusting. So I typically, I mean I shot this pretty good so I don't really wanna mess with it. Maybe like 5%, 5.5 looks pretty good. I like that warmth. It looks really nice. Tint value is another thing. And similar to uh, what I did with this other macro on the resizing, I did the same thing with tint. So my tint values, I normally never adjust beyond 20. So I told palette, only go to negative 20 or positive 20, and I'll show you guys why. So right now, if I go to negative 20, that's basically it. That's probably the most I would do because I would never go to negative 100 on my tint unless I wanted to recreate the matrix. Or if I go to plus 100, I would never use these values. So for me, I only wanna go up to 20 or negative 20. So this makes it a lot easier because I can have more precise control. Let's say I want, you know, that's a little bit too magenta -y and I can just go right there, that looks pretty good. Obviously I'm not using scopes or anything like that, which you should, but I'm just kind of eyeballing it and it looks pretty good. So the other thing is, for example, let's say I do this crazy render, I overexpose and everything's just looks crappy and oh, th there's my image and I just wanna start over. Sometimes that happens, I'm editing and I'm just tired and it's like, you know what, I don't like this. I can go here to Lumetri, hit delete and then do that or let me undo that or I can just push this button and it kills everything, it kills the whole entire effect. That's why it's in red, letting me know that it resets my Lumetri, it's basically my starting point. 
hit that red button and it begins. So this is actually really cool. I like it because it works really well. I haven't had any issues with Mac or Windows. And I like the fact that you can rearrange this however you want and everything works in real time. So for example, you'll see here, this is my shadows, but let's say for example, I want it over here and nothing, you'll see this, nothing will really be affected. And even if I switch it over, now this becomes my shadow and it works right away. So same thing, if I move it over here, now this becomes my shadow and I can rearrange that. So moving this around and configuring it to the way you work is something that I like. Now it's not perfect and there are a couple things that kind of annoy me and I'll show you guys. So remember I, I do my contrast, I do my highlights and I do my shadows here. So if you look at here, if I if you look at the contrast, if I wanted to go to 100, take a look. Da, da, da. Hmm, I keep turning and turning and turning and turning and turning. I'm only in 20. See how long that takes? It would be much faster for me to just do that to 100, right? So even though if I go to the palette app and I go to contrast, I set my sensitivity to max or high, it still takes on or it still takes forever. I wish there was a way where it's literally like 360 degrees, similar to this. And maybe I'm not using this correctly. Maybe this should be a slider. Like I understand highlights as a slider in Premiere. Maybe I should be using a slider because obviously I don't have that issue with temperature. Like if I go here, it'll quickly go to 100. And if I go here, it'll go to negative 100. So maybe I should be using a slider, but I still feel that there should be a mode where it should do it like a 360 degree dial. So meaning once I do full 360, it goes to 100 in, in contrast or whatever it is that you have it programmed and the same thing. So typically I only use these when I'm making minor adjustments. That's kind of a gripe. The other thing I have a gripe with is that it's all magnetic. That's awesome. I love that. But if you pick it up, uh, yeah, that kind of ends up happening. So again, not a deal breaker. Obviously you're going to be using this, but if you want to use this on your lap or if you want to kind of move things around, it does tend to break. So that could be like, a little bit annoying. Uh, the other thing, and it's, again, this is more me nitpicking than anything, is that it uses a micro USB connection. I wish it, I wish it was Type C, just because everything is now Type C. These MacBooks are Type C. So again, I'm just nitpicking, but I feel like it should be Type C, or maybe even wireless. That would be awesome. But other than that, I haven't had any complaints. Like I said, I've been using this for almost a whole entire year. I love the modularity. I want to add more sliders eventually, but I feel that this layout works really well for what I use it. And I kind of find that I don't really need anything else aside from this. Sometimes I will say though, I feel like just going in here and making adjustments is quicker on certain things, but that's just kind of more of a habit where I'm just used to using the mouse and the keyboard. But other than that, I really dig it. I like it. I would recommend it. And I don't think it's crazy expensive, like those full size controllers where you're going to spend thousands of dollars. So anyhow, guys, if you guys have any questions, leave me a comment down below. Also make sure to follow me on Instagram at Mondo Bites if you guys want to see behind the scenes. Stay tuned for next Tuesday so you guys don't miss out on the next Tessa Tuesday. Thanks again for watching and you will catch me in the next one. Adios.